if it's possible, why is it only possible in Christ and not in everyone else? Is not something that, you know, a human being, a rational human being, can then look at. It's unfair of God to then make a human being who can see everything of nature and cannot then actually understand that because it doesn't fit in with nature, God's nature. It doesn't fit in with his own laws. So how is it possible? We know from a point of view of medicine, of our understanding, that someone who is blind, yes, their eyesight could come back on its own if, in some senses, I suspect, but most of the times it needs treatment, it needs chemical reactions, it needs surgery. So therefore we know the process of, of God's ways, of his nature. This is you know, the same as when as a man gets older, a man will eventually get diseases, he will get illnesses and he will die. This is all part, we know this, this is something we can document, this is something we can see. And so to come across and, and you have one person that breaks all these rules does cause a problem. Obviously it doesn't if your Christian believes that he is God in, as well as being Christ. But then it becomes very, and this was another reason why I couldn't believe Christianity, because this idea of God being three in one, in the sense that Christ being God as well, how does he pray to himself? And it didn't make sense in those sense. If he had the power of God, why didn't he use it? And there's a lot of complications that come with this idea of God in man, because it doesn't quite make sense why God would, would, would do that. And um, and why he would go through the idea of birth and stuff like that. So um, if he wanted to come down, he could just come down rather than being born into. But um, I think I've said enough about this. And it would be interesting to know other people's comments. And maybe there are factual things that I have uh, got wrong or have got correct or made you think. Or maybe you have a reverse to this story or you have a, an answer to some of the things I've said obviously you know I only know what I know and um, by saying these things is a way for me to understand and it's a way for everyone to understand you know that is I think that's the key thing too in, in some ways the difference between someone who was born into religion and someone's converted I converted into a religion and often that makes you have to think about these things before making the choice of what you're going to do. Whereas if you're born into it, it's very difficult for you to then see other people's points of view because you've already, you, you haven't had to have this thought process. And, you know, that's something that is really important in faith to challenge your own faith. And God tells you, you know, he doesn't want a blind faith. There's no good having a blind faith. You have to have a faith from, you know, a heart faith, uh, a faith that's within your heart, mind and soul, something you really believe in, that you know you believe in, that you can think about it and question it. It's not wrong to question God and faith, because in by doing that is how you strengthen faith, how you understand it. So there might be things that I've said here that factually or biblically or etc. or you have the answer to them, you might be able to tell me that the reason why um, you know, I'm wrong about my m metaphoric teaching you know, idea of, of Christ and, and the sick and the blind and, and walk in the water, etc. is because of this, that and the other. And then that will make me think and I shall see them, well, does that fit rationally within what I understand, what I know, and it might make me think the difference. So you've got to remember that I was a man who didn't, and this is uh, you know, an interesting thing, I suppose, I was a man who didn't believe in um, faith. I believed in God and I you know, did pray to him uh, when I needed something and I would and I was very interested in morality extremely interested in morality and I followed very moral ways and that's part of the reason why when I was given the Quran although reluctantly when I started to read it I was amazed by the moral things that I had been following for most of my life and that I had decided were right were in fact within those texts and I'd never found that before and a lot of, and I say this a lot of times, that there were a lot of things in my life that I was looking for answers to and I never could find them and I don't even know exactly what they were now but there were things and when, and I'm not just making this up, I'm telling you the truth, when I read the Quran, after reading that, those fears, those questions were gone so they were answered within that, maybe I was just looking for um, a, a way of saying yes you're right these morals are right things you know acknowledgement of the fact that they do have some kind of backing and 
also I liked within the Quran what made me follow it was I think it was in chapter 2 uh, Surah Al-Baqarah I think it mentions about um, the idea of drinking, gambling being a something you shouldn't do um, and it uses it in that phrase that it's something that it has benefits but it ha is negative uh, the, the, is more negative than, than pluses so that's why you shouldn't do it and that I thought was such a, a wise way of putting things in, a, in opposed to say a commandment where it says you shall not do that without even explaining you know it said that yeah and it was rational because it was common sense it said that yes alcohol and gambling do have benefits or I think alcohol says do have benefits yeah you know, they make it feel good but they have negatives they you make you do things that you shouldn't do and that you know even in little amounts it, it spreads across generations of, across communities and causes problems we all know that and that that wise way of putting it really made me think yes there's something in this look at the way it's expressing this expressing it with common sense with wisdom and that came across and there were lots of other things that came across and you gotta remember I was a person who when I was taught told about obviously I've been brought up as in, in a Christian environment I didn't know anything about Islam obviously religion in films is uh, and this is why most people have a bad idea of faith and religion is because of the TV and film representation of, of, of religious people which is not generally something that's put as good usually they're put against scientists and they're made to look silly and this is something that everyone's grown up uh, within and that's why they you know why I I think had an image of what religion was about and that you know and obviously my own belief for the Christianity I couldn't believe it because of the cross because of the three in one because not the answer of the prayer and, and a few other things and um, but I had the mind where I knew that if I am you know, I, I, I could question myself. I know that I'd done that to myself. I, uh, during my years of college, when I was, I used to walk back and forward to college. I think, you know, I didn't have many friends then, so I would walk 45 minutes to, to school, and then I'd walk 45 minutes in the two hour break we had, and then back again. And then when I went home, 45 minutes. So I had a lot of time. And in that time, I thought about myself and how to make myself better and all that type of stuff. So I knew I had the, uh, I've always had that ability to be able to not think that everything I believe, everything I do is right. And so that was a, an advantage in a sense. Plus, it was very easy for me to become a Muslim in the sense that most of the things that I was following and doing, except praying, um, and going to, the, uh, to a religious place were already in my life. I didn't drink, I didn't do drugs, I didn't do alcohol, so all these things were already, I was already following a very Islamic lifestyle anyway. So it was very easy, and that's quite a surprise for most people that uh, I made the transition. There were obviously things I didn't, uh, that had to, uh, that at first I didn't believe in, and that through understanding I did. And I know some people will be thinking this idea of brainwashing is nothing to do with brainwashing. I'm not the type of person that could be brainwashed. I'm quite stubborn in my beliefs. I was, you know, I remember when I first was talking about Islam, you know, I was quite um, defamatory about religion, about Islam, about the Prophet and about these types of things because I saw things through how I perceived them without really actually really opening my mind and looking and thinking yeah is, is it really right what I'm saying and when I look back at the things I said I'm quite shocked and it, it so being able to look at oneself being able to look at one's beliefs one's thoughts and actually questioning them and thinking about them is not a bad thing it's not it doesn't it's no weakness in fact it's a strength because that is, you know, even by what I'm saying now, you might have a complete uh, belief in whatever you believe. And you'll be thinking about the, maybe the things I've said, and you will come up and you will find the answers to the things I've said. And that will strengthen your faith. And there's nothing harmful in, in, in questioning and in thinking about these things I do all the time. So that's what I'm saying, that if you have any comments or any, you know, where I've made any mistakes or anything that I am writing, or anything that yeah you've had doubts on it but you've come across this kind of way of explaining it and not everything has an explanation you know the whole point of the Bible and the Quran and the Torah is there's lots of parts you know God is not 
um, said that this is everything that's happened. You know, he doesn't he doesn't have the need to do that. Like in the idea of the creation of man uh, of the universe and man, etc. Not every single specific detail is given. There's a lot, you know, uh, left out. But you know, that's because we don't need to know it. Or because it's not necessary for us to redeem to redeem ourselves to make ourselves, um, you know, um, better people by actually knowing all this extra detail. We need a core amount. So yeah, there might be some things that can't be explained, and that that's part of faith. Um, I think I've said enough now, and I think that's everything that I wanted to say. Um, maybe I'll say more later. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, rather extra long edition of John Doyle's view. Um, so take care, take it easy, peace and God bless.